The fundamental theorem of calculus has a very useful application to computing integrals, and this involves antiderivatives. Let's remind ourselves of what the theorem says. Let f be a continuous function on the interval a, b. Then the function capital F of x, defined by this integral, is differentiable, and the derivative is simply little f of x. In words, capital F of x is an antiderivative of little f of x. Now let g of x be any antiderivative of little f. Then g of x equals capital F of x plus c for some constant c. And g of b minus g of a equals capital F of b plus c minus capital F of a plus c. The c terms cancel, leaving capital F of b minus capital F of a. Now capital F of a is just the integral from a to a, which is 0. So this is just f of b minus 0 which is the integral of f from a to b. Therefore, we can determine an integral easily, or at least avoid using the limit definition, if we can find a closed expression for an antiderivative of the integrand. By closed, I mean roughly something involving nothing but familiar functions, polynomials, trig functions, and so on. It's very important to realize that integrals and antiderivatives aren't the same despite some confusing notation. We often denote the general antiderivative, the one involving a plus c term, by this, which is like what we've already seen for integrals, only without limits of integration. If you're asked to find the integral of f of x, and there's no context telling you about an interval a, b, or anything else like that, then it's very likely that you're actually being asked to find the general antiderivative of f of x with respect to x. The connection between integrals and antiderivatives gives us a new way to interpret the area under curves. Remember that the antiderivative of a velocity function is the displacement, or net change, function of the object in question. So if this gray region is the area under a velocity curve v of x, then that area is numerically equal to the displacement of the object between a and b. For example, if the velocity at time t of an object moving in a straight line is v of t equals t squared, then the net change in the position of the object between t equals 2 and t equals 7 is the integral from 2 to 7 of t squared dt, which is t cubed over 3 evaluated between 2 and 7, and that's 343 divided by 3 minus 8 divided by 3. This interpretation helps us see why we want to consider area below the x-axis to be negative, if we look at this curve, then this area represents positive displacement, or forward motion, while this area represents negative displacement, or backward motion. One more thing to note. While finding nice forms of antiderivatives can be difficult, and is sometimes impossible, the fundamental theorem of calculus guarantees that every continuous function has an antiderivative. For example, e to the negative x squared has an antiderivative on every interval a, b, namely this integral. This isn't, of course, a nice closed formula.